After my last video on blurring textures using noise in Redshift, Darby Edelin reached out and showed me an OSL he had started cooking up using a lot of the same techniques I showed, but in a much neater, smarter way. In this video, I'm going to show you an overview of the key features of this OSL shader and how to use it. The first thing to note is that this OSL is not aware of UV edges. Um, we don't think that's possible right now. So it's not going to blur in world space in the same way that you might expect from, say, Substance Painter. But uh, what I found is as long as your seams aren't right down the middle of your object, like in this photogrammetry asset, it works really well. Um, and as long as your values aren't super, super high, like I'm using here just to demonstrate, then you should have no problems with UV seams. So I'm just going to grab the OSL node here and load in the OSL file. We'll grab UV Offset and plug it into the texture, General UV Remap Offset, and we have a tiny bit of blur. I'll turn it up to 10 and you'll see the effect. If I push in really close, what's great about this method is that you'll never find the noise pattern as with the method I showed in my previous video. It just works on a per sample basis, so um, it's really, really powerful and flexible. Right now we're in UV space, so if I were to put this to 100, we're blurring if you imagine a UV tile that goes from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, uh, covering this whole square here, we're blurring all the way across it. At 10, we're blurring 1 tenth the radius of that UV tile. So if you were to have uh, an object where the texel density was different, you know, the UVs were a little stretched over here, your blur would vary based on that. So the other option would be world space. Uh, world space will, as the name implies, blur in world space. If I were to take our... Uh, plane here and put it down to say 10 centimeters um, with the same texture as I push down you'll see it's blurred all the way across because we're working in world space the alternative to that is the third space which is object space so if I put this into object space then grab our plane here and maybe I scale it down to 10 percent you'll see that the blur remains consistent because object mode will scale down with your object now, as our direction mode is set to anisotropy, we can come into the anisotropy settings here and give it a bit of anisotropy. And you can see as I change the rotation, we get this super cool motion blur effect, which can be very, very useful. The other direction mode that we have access to is vector blur. So I'm going to switch over from anisotropy to vector blur here. I'm going to switch my vector blur space to world. And then from here, we can define a, a vector and you can see that if I make it one in X, we get directional blur that way. If I make it one in Y, we get upwards blur. You can combine these. But where this becomes very powerful is when you start to define custom fields for this. So I'm going to take three Maxon noises here. I'll plug them into the surface and you can see that they're just uh, all of them the same, let's say wavy turbulence with just different seeds. And uh, all of these are plugged into a vector maker, plugged into X, Y, and Z of a vector maker. Vector maker will combine these together, and we can actually have a look at that. And you can see we get this three colored noise. So if we plug our texture back in, we can then plug this vector maker result into our OSL. Parameters, vector blur, direction vector. And then you can see we get this super crazy cool effect. I could change the scale of this noise to get a different look. Maybe make it very, very small. We get this sort of ripply effect. Play with the power of the blur here. This is a super powerful tool to have. I think this has lots of applications, especially for non-photorealistic rendering. So we also have access to center, which is uh, sort of an offset uh, weighting the blur towards the beginning or the end of it. Um, you can think of it as sort of setting the shutter in your Redshift camera to uh, start, center, or end. One thing to note would be sort of the artifacts that we're getting with our vector blur here on very low poly curved surfaces. And what you're going to want to do for that is you just put down a state node grab the tangent out of that, and then you can plug that right into parameters, vector blur, tangent input. And you can see the artifacts are greatly reduced. A very exciting recent addition to this OSL shader is the ability to blur maxon noises. 
So we're going to put down a max on noise here. I'm going to make sure it's in world space. I'm going to switch the type to, say, cell Voronoi, which should demonstrate the effect nicely. I'll scale it down a little bit. And then we're just going to grab the world offset, and we're going to plug it into inputs input, interesting naming scheme, and we're going to plug that into offset. And then you see we get this absolutely crazy blur effect. Uh, if I were to just kind of play with the strength a little bit, you'll see we're getting like this painterly, indescribable look. And if we were to grab all of our Maxon noses at once here and go from Stupel to maybe Naki, we can see we get different blur effects depending on which algorithm we use, maybe Voronoi. I think this would be super useful for non-photorealistic rendering. I can think of all sorts of uses for this, too many to list at the moment. I could also bring down the size of these input noises, and you can see the effect gets very, very interesting indeed with smaller noises. But you don't just need to use this uh, vector blur mode with maxon noises. If I were to come back here and switch just to anisotropy, you can see we're just getting a straightforward blur effect on our maxon noise. And even just this is, is a big deal because you could do all sorts of layering of noises. You could take a noise, blur it, layer it on top of itself for a glow effect. Endless, endless possibilities.